Hello friends, and welcome to our Monday Night Reset. This is 30 minutes of restorative yoga. The first 10 to 15 minutes here are gonna be a stretch just for your end of work, 15 minutes, get blood flowing back in your body, re-energize yourself for the rest of the week. And then if you feel like it, if you have the time, if you'd like to de dedicate that time to yourself, take the next 15 minutes to join us with more restorative yoga postures. Today, we're gonna to be hitting some Sun A, uh, some nice and general kind of, I like to use uh, Sun A as a check-in. This is really how you can tell exactly how your body's feeling that day. Uh, if you do it often enough, you'll be able to notice subtle differences in your body, depending on your energy levels, depending on how tight different areas of your body are, and etc. So I wanna start implementing that into our practice here on Mondays a little more, just so that we can have a self-check-in. Where is the stiffness in the body? Where do we need to put some extra effort into going into the rest of the week here? It is six o'clock on a Monday night in the central time zone. So it's time for our Monday night reset and we will get started here. If you are joining us from seated, I will give you modifications. However, I am going to be queuing this class from standing. If you don't have water, <laughs> take this time to go get some as we start to warm up here. But as we get started, start bringing your toes all the way together in the center of your mat. You can gaze down at them. Shift your weight forward and back, warming up your ankles. If you're seated, you can still do this with just your ankles. You'll get less of a hamstring workout with it. But drawing stillness into the upper body, shifting the gaze up and forward, just really rocking out any ankle tightness, lifting the toes when our heels hit the ground, and settling our hands at our side, drawing stillness into our feet, bringing our toes together, drawing our thighs forward and together, squeezing into the midline, altering our hips, knitting our rib cage together, drawing the shoulders long down the spine, lifting the chin ever so slightly. This is our standing at attention pose, which is finalized by pressing our palms and our fingertips against each other at heart center, pressing with our arms, engaging the forearms, making sure, attempting to squeeze out all the air in between our palms. We inhale and open mouth, exhale. Inhale through the nose and open mouth, exhale. For the rest of today's practice, we'll be engaging what is known as an ujjayi breath. I'm gonna turn down our music ever so slightly. Mostly because it's loud in my ear. <laughs> Let me know if you still can't hear that or anything, please. As we're in this standing at attention pose, again, we'll be taking an ujjayi breath for the rest of practice. At any point, if you feel too hot or if you just need a little break, you can come back to this inhaling through the nose and open mouth exhaling, eventually resettling back into the ujjayi breath. For the ujjayi breath, we inhale through the nose, drawing texture into our breath, and exhale through the nose. Again, creating that texture. Inhale, lifting the tongue, contracting the back of the throat slightly, and exhale through the nose. Take two more breaths here. Inhale. And again, inhale. You can blink your eyes closed if you're comfortable, but this is your opportunity to set an intention for this practice and for the rest of your week to discard the stresses of today and move forward unabashedly. 
we inhale to charge this intention statement, whether it be something as simple as, I will do well this week, or I will listen to myself, or if it's something more complex, like a project completion goal, or whatever you may have on your plate today. We inhale, invigorating this intent, and exhale, sending it out into the world. Inhale to charge once more. And exhale. With that, you can blink your eyes gently open and we'll get started. Inhale our arms long upward, lifting them above the head, spreading the fingertips wide as far apart as we can sprawl them. Reaching all the way up, down, now, excuse me, <laughs> draw attention to your shoulders. Are they shrugged all the way up? Draw them down your back, giving some width to your shoulders. Drawing the navel in, keeping the gaze slightly elevated. And again, drawing inward to that median, that midline of the body. This is standing Tadasana Mountain Pose. Take a few breaths here. And really notice where in your spine you're feeling some difficulty. We'll be taking six different stretches in the spine, so you'll get to play into those as much as you feel you need going into these stretches. Inhale, draw the hands out, creating 90 degree angles with your arms and drawing the chest warmly forward and up in the same direction as your gaze. Just a little back bend drawing heat into our backs. Inhale, coming back to standing Tadasana pose. Exhale. And inhale, cactus back bend once more. And exhale. Inhale, instead of coming back to mountain pose, draw the left hand towards the back of your mat. Excuse me, it'll be the side of your mat for you if you're standing normally on a mat. But drawing your trunk to the left side, engaging the shoulders, keeping the arms at 90 degree angles. And on the inhale, engaging more with the twist. On the exhale, realigning your hips towards the front, towards your camera, or towards your screen, I suppose. Again, we inhale, drawing length into the twist, and exhale, examining our form. Two more breaths here, inhale. Exhale. And exhale, drawing neutrality to your spine and lifting your hands back to the sky for Tadasana. We inhale, engaging that back bend once more. And exhale. Inhale, finding standing Tadasana. And exhale, excuse me, exhale. <laughs> inhale, finding that cactus. Dig deeper into the arch in your back if you can. Restoring neutrality to your spine, keep your hands and your arms exactly where they are. Repeating our trunk twist on the right side, drawing our right hand towards the back wall, or opening our chest up to our right side. On the inhale, engaging the twist. And on the exhale, realigning our hips towards the front, towards our screens. We'll take two more breaths here. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale, finding neutrality back in your spine and bringing your hands back down to your sides. You can give them a good shake out, maybe shrug your shoulders a little bit. 
and step out with your legs. We'll go into some seated cat cow. So for those in a seat, stay where you are. For those of us standing, come slowly to the ground into Virasana Hero's Pose. Drawing our knees together and our ankles just far enough apart for our sit bones to sit directly on. This is uncomfortable, of course, modify. Uh, if this is a um, if this is a posture that is too hard on your hips, you can either place a yoga block underneath your sit bones or take an easy seat. For seated cat cow, we draw neutrality to the spine, bringing it as erect as possible, bringing our hands down to our knees. If you're sitting cross-legged, you can grab your ankles or your feet, but we shrug the shoulders forward drawing roundness into the spine, drawing the navel all the way to the back wall and up, bringing the chin all the way to the chest. We reverse this, rounding our shoulders back. For those of us in Varasana, you can grab your feet in this posture or in this side. Engaging into that back bend, similar to the feeling that we had in that cactus back bend while we were standing. If you're comfortable, you can drop your head all the way back. But only go as comfortable or as far as is comfortable in your body today. Inhale, rounding the spine, drop the shoulders forward, the navel back. Exhale, cat. Inhale, cow. Excuse me, that was cat. I screwed up again. <laughs> and inhale into your cow position. <laughs> your shoulders back, maybe hands on your back on the back of your feet, engaging that forward chest opener. Inhale to round the spine, last cat, mainly so I can say the name right. <laughs> and inhale the cat. The last way we haven't bent our spine yet is side to side. So from this seated Varasana, or if you're seated, even better, we're going to draw into a seated Tadasana Mountain Pose, drawing the fingers as wide as possible, shrugging our shoulders down our back, knitting our rib cage together, draw stillness into this posture much as you can. Lacing the hands together, you can leave your first two fingers out of that if you'd like to direct the energy, a little yogi gun. We'll first bend to the left, drawing our fingertips to the left side of our mat. This should be a gentle back bend. only go as far as is comfortable. If you'd like to engage this pose even more, of course, option to just bend further. But another option is to draw your left hand across and grab onto your shoulder. This will give you a little more stability to engage this pose, but make sure you aren't dragging your body forward. We want to remain open to the front. Take two breaths here. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. 
Inhale, finding neutrality in your spine, taking Tadasana. We'll throw in one last little cactus back then, just as it feels good. Exhale, back to Tadasana Mountain Pose. Lacing our fingers together, finding that yogi gun once more. We'll inhale over to the right side, drawing our pointer fingers as far over as we can. Again, option to drop your right hand, bringing it to your left shoulder and engaging the stretch even further with that added support in the trunk. Inhale and exhale. One more breath. Inhale and exhale. Inhale, finding neutrality in the spine, releasing our arms down into our lap, onto our knees. This is where I bid you streaming and giving folk adieu, or if you only had 15 minutes for your practice today, this is a gentle place to stop. For those remaining, we'll be going into some more restorative postures here. From Varasana, our seated pose here. If you're on a block, now's the time to remove it. Come all the way down onto your back. Slowly, and gently, vertebra, vertebra by vertebra, if you can. Leaving our knees bent, drawing our feet long on the floor, hands resting comfortably at our sides. We're going to take some fish pose to match our, our chest openers. We're going to echo some hip openers. So sliding our feet all the way together, Gently dropping our knees to the outside of the mat. This is fish pose. Option to have your hands gently on your thighs, on your chest, or at your side. This is not a posture that I recommend manually opening, at least while reclined. Take some time here to feel the difference in your back. Is there still any tightness that you know needs addressing? Draw deep to your breath here, inhaling through the nose and exhaling through the nose. While you remain in this posture, I'm going to figure out what happened to our music. Ah, looks like we made it through that playlist. <laughs> All right. This is a little aggressive. <laughs> All right. From Fish Pose. We're going to slowly begin our movement into our Sun A practice for today. Drawing our knees back up, give them a little, little hug into the chest. You can either grab on the fronts of your shins or on the backs of your thighs, but squeeze into that ball. Gently begin rocking up and forth, back, or backward and forward until you're at a full seated position. From here, place both of your hands about shoulder width distance apart at what is likely the back of your mat, bringing your legs out to a standing plank, not standing, a wide-legged plank, high plank, there's the word. Once we've settled into this posture, inhale, shift the weight forward, your shoulders should go ahead of your wrists. Inhale, lower less than halfway down into a tricep push-up. Shifting forward into upward facing dog. 
And exhale, hinging back into downward facing dog. As this is our first downward dog of the day, take some extra time, come back into a plank if you need to. Really pedal out your hamstrings. Playing with different angles of modulation on your ankle, your ankle angles, if you will. <laughs> but eventually finding stillness, drawing back into downward facing dog. This is a posture where putting a hand under your, or a towel under your hands might be useful. We want to draw width across our shoulders, draw our navel in and upward, pressing through each fingertip and our palms. Inhale, shift your gaze forward, hopping or stepping your feet to the top of your mat. Inhale, halfway lift, drawing your spine <clears throat> and your legs into a 90 degree angle. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, we're gonna roll up our body vertebra by vertebra ragdoll the last thing <clears throat> excuse me the last thing that should come up is your chin give yourself some clothes fluttering <laughs> things like to get into awkward postures and positions in a roll up as such <laughs> When you get to the top, draw your toes together as if we're going to stand in atten at attention again. And we'll go through Sun A. Inhale, Tadasana Mountain Pose, drawing the hands up above, spreading our fingers as wide as we possibly can. Inhale, hands to heart center, hinging all the way forward. For forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, walk your feet back into plank position. Chaturanga, inhale, shifting forward. Exhale, lowering less than halfway down. Inhale, upward facing dog. And exhale, downward facing dog. If the Chaturanga push-up is out of your practice right now for any reason, feel free to take high plank for the duration of chaturanga meeting us in downward dog inhale through the nose open mouth exhale once more inhale through the nose and open mouth exhale inhale shift the gaze forward <clears throat> exhale hopping or stepping your feet to the top of your mat Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, root to rise, Tadasana Mountain Pose. Exhale, give yourself a little back bend, loving up on some of those muscles we use in office jobs and etc. Inhale, Tadasana Mountain Pose. Exhale, forward fold. Hinging at the waist. You can put as much of a bend in your knees here as you need. If you are all the way on the ground, work instead on rolling your shoulders forward and slowly inching your legs into a more fully extended position. From this forward fold, inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, chaturanga, step out to high plank. Inhale, shift forward. Exhale, down. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, hinge back into downward facing dog. Great job, inhale here through the nose. Open mouth, exhale, give yourself some heat exhaust. You're doing great. 
We're gonna flow Sun A one more time. Inhale, shift the gaze forward. Exhale, step or leap to the front of your mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, root to rise. Tadasana, mountain pose. Last time, and once we get into Chaturanga, that'll be it. Go into our Shavasana. Inhale, give yourself one last little back bend. If any of our warm up poses give you a different indication for a back stretch that you would like, whether that be a trunk twist, side body stretch, this cactus forward fold, or maybe you want to drop forward, hugging your shoulders and giving yourself an inverse of that chest opener, whatever that may be. Take that for one more breath. Inhale and exhale back through the nose. Inhale, Tadasana. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, step out into the high plank. And this time, instead of Chaturanga, shift your weight forward. Inhale into the tricep push-up and lower all the way down to the ground as slowly as possible. You can rest your head on either side. Option for arms, hands, shoulders, block, pillow, bolster, blanket, whatever you chose to bring to class today. Hopefully you brought your hands <laughs> or your arms at a minimum. Option to also bring your head straight down, resting your chin or your forehead on the ground. Get your hands prepped for our next posture here, bringing our hands about equal with our pecs, just under our shoulders. Spread your fingers wide. We'll engage cobra, keeping our shins and our thighs engaged against the ground. Get forward a little bit. I've got a wall to contend with here. <laughs> Engaging a cobra keeping our elbows at our sides and not letting them flare out. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale, lowering all the way back down to the ground. Get your hands prepped back to the same position, just next to our pectoids, pectorals, there we go. <laughs> and spreading our fingers wide underneath our shoulders. Inhale, lift. Drawing mostly on the muscles in our core and our belt of abs to sustain us up, putting pressure into our, uh, the tops of our feet, our shins and our thighs. If you feel a pinching, disengage a little bit or all the way and come back into this cobra. From here, hinge at the waist, drawing the buttocks all the way back into child's pose. Option to sink all the way directly back. Option to also spread your knees for wide-legged child's pose. Engaging our forearms against the mat, really trying to push our back into our pelvis.
the opposite of clinging for life on a cliff. <laughs> Inhale, come up from your child's pose into tabletop. Here we're going to do a quick twist. So from this tabletop, grabbing your right hand, sliding it through the keyhole here created between our left arm and left leg, dragging it horizontally on the ground until our shoulder engages with the ground. Option to stay here. Also option to do the same thing with your right leg. <laughs> it is not a very elegant thing. And then from there, you can either keep your left foot engaged against the ground or option to take it out long if you don't have a wall in your way like I do. <laughs> but the goal here is to open our hips up while giving our shoulders a gentle stretch your gaze should come down to your left hand here. Inhale, bringing your legs back if you modified those. And coming back up to tabletop. We'll take the same posture on the other side. Starting first, grabbing our left hand sliding the back of our hand across the floor until our shoulder, our left shoulder, meets our right hand. If this is enough of a stretch for you, option to stay here. Option also to bring your left leg through that keyhole as well, coming down onto that leg, engaging our right foot to stay flat on the ground, or to go out long. Our gaze shifting back down to our right hand. Inhale, coming back to that tabletop. We'll engage our final posture before Shavasana here. We're just going to tuck our toes underneath, hinging back into downward dog. Shift your gaze forward on an inhale, drawing first your right foot up into a pigeon, our left foot matching our left wrist, our right Sorry, our right foot matching our left wrist and our right knee matching our right wrist. Hinge back into downward dog. And come right back into pigeon on the other side, guiding the left foot to the right wrist and the left knee to the left wrist. Shifting the gaze forward. And now you can wrap the other foot all the way around and bring your gaze towards your screen. Today we'll be taking a seated Shavasana. If you'd like to take a laying Shavasana, that is totally your option and I welcome you to do that. For those in seated position with me, find an easy seat, one particularly where your bones, you can't feel them hitting each other. Drawing your hands either gently to your knees, I invite you if you feel you need support from the universe, of God, whatever your higher belief is, then draw your palms open and outward. This is a receiving posture with our hands. If you feel like you need more time to yourself, if this is a more introverted period in your life, then you can draw your palms down flat onto your knees. And this is your opportunity to take up space. Eventually losing all thoughts of pattern to your breath. 
and returning to a normal, everyday stop breathing for you. Here, it can be so easy to start to dwell on all of those things we have yet to do, either today or the rest of this week, or to go back and think about all of those things that stressed us out prior to this practice. But this is your opportunity, the Shavasana, to acknowledge those thoughts and carefully file them away. Maybe a task that you didn't get done today, that you need to get done this week, came up just now. Respectfully tell that thought, that task, that you realize its importance. And you're grateful for its warning. But now is not the time this is time for you. And if you have a particularly intrusive thought and it's hard to get rid of, feel free to come back to that Ujjayi breath to guide you past the thought and then return to your normal everyday breathing. This is a powerful tool, this breath meditation, to guide you through those particularly intrusive thoughts or glum feelings, and to move past them, to not necessarily banish them from your life, but to invite them to a different portion where this time isn't reserved for yourself. Attack ships on fire. If you are in laying Shavasana, guide yourself slowly into a seated posture, inviting motion slowly into your body. For those of us seated, follow that same advice. <laughs> Start drawing movement into a few of your fingers. Willow's taking that advice. Maybe go into rotating your wrists, wiggling your toes, mobilizing your ankles, shrugging your shoulders, rolling out your neck, inviting small motion to reactivate your body to the world outside of this practice. Like, With our eyes still closed, I invite you to bring your hands to heart center. Right. And take one last deep breath for this practice. Inhaling through the nose. Open mouth, exhale. I lie. One more. Inhale through the nose. And open mouth, exhale. We guide our hands to our third eye center, resting our thumbs gently on our brow. The teacher the student, and the light in me acknowledges and expresses the utmost gratitude for the light, the student, and the teacher in you. We bow to seal today's practice. Thank you guys so much for coming to another Monday Night Reset. Whether you're seeing this live or catching it on YouTube or on the Twitch buds, I want to express my utmost gratitude for you taking the time for yourself today. Uh, Mondays are not easy. <laughs> they never have been. Lord knows mine wasn't. Yours probably wasn't either. 
but it is so easy to wrap ourselves up wholly in those moments. And this is the time where we have to come unwind and breathe through it together. If you missed it 30 minutes prior to the stream, I'm on Twitch, I'm gaming, I'm listening to your complaints about your day, letting you vent it all out. It's a place of positivity, of reward, of gratitude. Uh, so I really invite you to come to that as well. If you have any questions for me, you can email them to yogaflipside at gmail.com or drop it in our suggestion box or shoot this profile a direct message. Otherwise, uh, I hope that you catch either this stream or next week or you catch the video of this stream on Friday when it comes out. Again, I've been Ethan Kui. I'm a 200-hour registered Yoga Alliance teacher. I am so grateful to have you in class today. I hope that you have a great rest of your week and I'll maybe see you on Friday. <laughs>